So you want a camera to send pictures to your phone, but you don't know where to start. There's a lot of information on the web. Um, it can be a little bit confusing. You know, these wireless cameras have been around for quite some time now, but we're just now seeing critical mass uh, amongst deer hunters where the demand is getting high and I guess it's acceptable, social acceptance has taken place. Um, it's March of 2020 and we're about a month and a half removed from the largest whitetail uh, consumer trade show in the country. And during that trade show, one or the most common question we got when we were, you know, the team was talking to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people was, do you have cameras that send pics to your phone? That was by far the most common question. And as we answered that question and started talking about the Exodus Render, um, it just opened up a, a can of worms and those conversations got um, really in depth and became quite long because there are so many, uh, so many other questions that kind of arose in those, in those conversations. And when guys are talking about wireless cameras, there are a lot of different wireless cameras on the marketplace, a lot of different technology, a lot of different types. And we were, I guess, lucky enough um, to be across from a competitor that had cameras at that show. And, you know, their, their whole sales pitch was free downloads straight to your phone anywhere in the world. And it was a little bit misleading because the camera was not cellular. It actually was um, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, whereas transmitting photos, maybe 100 feet. So we thought, you know, hearing that and then talking to consumers, we thought this video would be uh, a good topic to talk about the different types of wireless trail cameras because they're not all cellular, but talk about the different wireless types of cameras um, and explain kind of the pros and cons of each. So the first one we want to touch on are trail cameras that operate via Bluetooth or transmit data via Bluetooth. There are several cameras out there that will, you know, download photos or send photos to your phone through an app um with bluetooth, bluetooth technology which you know the bluetooth side of things is it has definitely come a long way uh since the early days and the most the easiest way to explain bluetooth i guess for you know the everyday consumer is you're probably using that in your vehicle um with an audio device to you with your phone or maybe a set of um a set of headphones or earbuds airpods something like that that's bluetooth technology so bluetooth a Bluetooth module or Bluetooth hardware in your camera is going to send pictures to your phone when the camera is connected to your to your phone or device via Bluetooth and you have an app that's open. It's pretty cool. You don't have to go check your uh, SD cards and pull them, you know, and download them to your computer or download them to your phone. You know, they're getting sent straight to your phone, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, but in reality, the transmission distance with Bluetooth is very very limited and. If you add terrain and add veg vegetation, trees, weeds, um, and other barriers, it's gonna really cut down on that transmission uh, distance. And at the end of the day, you're not really getting the advantage of a true wireless device through Bluetooth. So um, I guess don't be fooled by that technology. The second type of wireless device we wanna talk about is Wi-Fi. Now, you know, a lot of people are familiar with some of the new security cams like the Ring Doorbell and the Arlo and all these different types of um, home security type cameras that uh, are Wi-Fi enabled. And, you know, back in 2015 when we first launched Exodus, our very first camera back in 2015 had Wi-Fi capabilities. Um, you could plug a Wi-Fi SD card in that camera and then boom, um, that camera became Wi-Fi where it would send pictures um, to your phone. Again, the downside to, to Wi-Fi is you know in most remote locations you're not going to have wi-fi signal you're not going to have a wi-fi service um, so in most applications where guys are wanting to use wireless cameras you know wi-fi is not going to cut it now if you're using your cameras around home where you have a home router set up uh, or maybe you're using a, um, a camera for security you can absolutely use a trail camera with wi-fi capabilities um, you know and let the camera send pictures to your phone but for most cases, most wireless trail cameras are not going to have that type of hardware. If um, you know if that use case is applicable to you, or you can use them around the house and you have Wi-Fi service, your best bet is probably using um, you know one of those Wi-Fi home security type cameras. So the third type of wireless trail camera we want to talk about are mesh network cameras, and you know a, a lot of people are probably starting to become more familiar with the link type systems where you can 
um, connect several cameras and create a mesh network and send them to a remote base. And what they're using there are, you know, radio transceivers. There's, there's hardware in that camera transceiver where you can transmit and receive data and basically daisy chain those devices to send data um, a long ways. Now with the radio frequencies, there's plus, again, there's plus and minuses. In theory, you can push data a long ways with longer wavelengths. They're, they're slower, so the wavelengths aren't as high or as fast. The networks aren't, the bandwidth isn't as broad but you can move data a farther distance. Um, so the transmission times with these types of um, networks are gonna be a lot slower um, when you compare them to cellular cameras. You're not getting your pictures in seconds, your minutes, uh, or even longer, maybe five, 10, ten minutes, uh, depending how long that data is actually traveling. And then the systems themselves can be very cumbersome to set up. So depending on how the, how the, op oper the system operates, um, you know, if that daisy chain or that network is broken, then your camera's searching for the next available um, device to kind of connect to, to complete that chain, to push that data. And it can be quite difficult for users to kind of understand how to set it up and then how to troubleshoot if they do have, you know, if they do have problems. And again, you know, vegetation, terrain is gonna play into that on how far you can actually um, transmit that data. And that's not something, you know, these types of link systems or linked networks aren't something where you can just go buy a single camera and put it on your property and have that data data sent to your phone so the upfront cost is a little more you need several cameras to kind of create that system uh, to send it to a home base where either actually pulling that card at that home base or you have um, you know wireless service at that home base so that's the true advantage of a system like that is you're able to use and connect these cameras in places where you don't have signal and maybe transmit that data and drive that data to a home base or a cellular base where you do have signal where then those you know those photos can be uploaded but um, outside of that there's not um, you know camera management troubleshooting there's not a whole lot of benefits other than being able to you know connect those cameras in an area where you don't have cell signal and drive it to an area that you do so the last type of wireless camera we want to talk about is what Exodus has to offer it's what um, most of the leading wireless trail camera manufacturers have to offer and that is a standalone cellular wireless trail camera um, so these cameras are built with specific pieces of cellular hardware cell module where it's operating off of existing network inf infrastructure whether that's Verizon whether that's AT&T uh, US cellular whatever network that the camera is operating on it has specific hardware to connect just like your phone just like your mobile phone uh, to connect to that network and transmit photos or videos now, when you start comparing cellular wireless cameras, there's a lot of different types of cameras with different capabilities, um, different performance levels. So we're not gonna get into all that, but the power of a cellular trail camera is, you know, and this is, goes beyond the, uh, the other three types of cameras that we talked about, is being able to set it up in a remote location where you have cellular signal and control that remotely with two-way communication through a mobile app or um, your phone or PC or any really any connected device um, and with today's you know new 4G network and the, the cellular infrastructure across the United States there's a ton of different options there's not too many places um, where you can't use these kind of standalone devices to have them transmit to your phone so again that's just comparing these and recapping a little bit um, there are Bluetooth wireless trail cameras there are uh, Wi-Fi wireless trail cameras there are what we call mesh network or um, a link type system with wireless cameras and then you have standalone uh, cellular cameras that uh, most of the major player players are offering today because of the advantages so uh, if you guys have any questions on any of those types of systems or on a specific product or you know what we do at Exodus please drop a comment below. We appreciate all the feedback. Um, our channel's growing like crazy and it wouldn't be doing so if you guys weren't finding value in this stuff. So we're, we're assuming you guys appreciate these videos, appreciate all the work that uh, goes on behind the scenes and thank you.